What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and we got Sir Love back for it. This is what the third time. It's gonna be the third one. All right, the third time we're back at Sir Love's space, and this time we're just gonna ask some of those first-time questions that y'all have, um, and, up, and it's really gonna be marketing from a manager's perspective. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead right back to that original video, like I got uh, promised you guys. I was gonna get those questions out, and the first one is from Comatica One. How? Do you market properly? Do you do campaign runs or do you self promote? How do you just basically, what do you feel is the proper marketing route for a new artist? I think it's gonna differ per artist. I believe that marketing in itself, it has a texture to it. And that texture has to match the energy in the brand of the artist. Um, and exactly. so, you know, there is no system. If you look at the successes that, you know, other artists have had, there's, you can't say that Taylor Swift did it the same way that Katy Perry did it, that Beyonce did it, that any that Rihanna did it. You know, I think the key to to marketing is you have to figure out what that it factor is that's going to drive people towards you. You know, for someone like Rihanna, it was really based off fashion. You know, yep. that was a big thing for her. And so then, you know, their marketing strategies and campaigns went around that. I do think that every person that's marketing themselves as an artist does have to have campaigns. You know, you have different categories of marketing. You have your actual campaigns. You have uh, which could break down into guerrilla campaigns, online campaigns. Um, print campaigns, uh, outdoor campaigns, which is like billboards and things of that nature. Like there's all sorts of different campaigns within. Um, but overall, as an artist, it's really taking the tools that, that you learn about on this show and figuring out how to administer that, that information to the public. Are you going to do traditional advertising? Or are you going to do no advertising and just marketing? Because there's a difference between advertising and marketing, which I'm pretty definitely. sure you need to do something on yeah, that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I definitely need to do a breakdown on that one. Thanks for that one. Um, we... Uh, the biggest thing I can say to that is also just ha having that self-awareness, as Sir kind of alluded, like knowing what that it factor is going to be for every single artist, how Rihanna was fashion. What is your it factor? What is something that's innate to you or just easy and organic for you that you can play off of and amplify out to the audience? Because that's where you're going to be central for your brand. That's where you're going to come up with ideas to market your campaign, create right. your marketing campaigns, even some of the guerrilla things, but it has to be consistent. That's uh, pretty much the biggest thing that I could say for that. If you, you have anything else you want to no, say? No, I definitely say consistency is important. So I jump in on that and say it's definitely con important in picking that sector that you're going to operate in and being consi consistent in that sector. Because sometimes I've seen people have success by having uh, operating in different sectors and having kind of a different approach, but they're consistent with both approaches in those different sectors. You know, there was a time period when artists were releasing, you know, Kanye West released one record technically for the streets and then right. another record, you know, he had stronger for the commercial audience yep. and then he had uh, that wait till I get my money right for the streets and he had yep. two different marketing campaigns yep. for, for the exact same album. So, you know, you can be creative with it. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's, that's definitely something we got to um, go deeper in. For the newer artists, you guys might not have to worry about anything like that just yet. Um, but a second question is from Chris Smith, and I'm going to change it up just a little bit. Um, okay. What services can artists use to self-promote? When you say services, I'm assuming you mean like digital platforms and things of that nature. Um, so if you're self-promoting, one of the easiest platforms that's out there is things like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google AdWords, things yep. of that nature. Very easy for you to jump into those spaces and self-promote yourself. There's also traditional print flyers, things of that nature, hiring people to walk, walk, run around with flyers, posters, putting them up, things of that nature. Um, other services is hiring a marketing coordinator or some marketing uh, consulting or someone of that nature to put together campaigns for you. Radio is a service, believe it or not. That is a marketing tool <laughs> yeah, for you to for sure uh, to, for you to market. Um, you know, basically any means, uh, Spotify, you know, any streaming platform. All of these things are tools and services. All of the everywhere that you hear music. There's someone behind that that's offering a service to allow you to get on that same platform because it's a business. All these people want to make money. And so, you know, finding out where you want to be and trying to get in contact with the people behind the scenes of there. Anytime you're trying to give a check, it's easy to get in contact with someone when you're trying to give them a check. So, uh, you know, yep. a service is just about everything. All right. And next question is from Julija Stive. I hope I'm saying that right. But what is the best marketing and strategy to get music heard by a real crowd of people. Best strategy to get music heard by a real crowd of people is for you to be networking with people that have real crowds. Period. So whether that whether that's an online audience, like maybe there's some YouTuber that has a million subscribers and would love to debut do your music. Maybe there's a DJ that spins at a really popular event. He he may not see a, a thousand you know 
a million people at one time, but he over the course of the year, he's definitely seen a million people and he's playing sure. the record. Uh, maybe it's someone at a festival, uh, you know, a convention or conference where there's a whole lot of people. Who's in charge of the music? And how often is your face seen out in that space? Um, if you're looking for large scale marketing opportunities, then you attack large scale markets. That's basically saying, I'm going to go for the top instead of going for the bottom and working my way up the top. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. As long as you can sell and pitch yourself, because at this level, these people want to see you have your ish together before they work with you. Whereas if you start talking to, you ask a YouTuber that has 500 subscribers to post your stuff, you know, they may not care or vet you to, you know, see if they want to play your stuff. Yep. And that's kind of a perfect uh, mention, considering um, I actually did an influencer video. Um, you guys check that out if you haven't yet. I just dropped it a couple of days ago. But really what's very important in terms of marketing strategy, what's the best route? You have to consider what is your goal? Do you Are you doing this particular marketing strategy to get fans? Or are you particularly doing this version of your marketing just to get awareness in general? And you just want a lot, you want to make a big name for yourself or just make some kind of big wave and let people know that you exist at all. So what are you marketing for? Because you could maybe, I don't know, go into a big crowd at the mall or something and just start playing. That's a, that's a crowd of people, but is that getting you what you want in particular? So always apply a goal and then it's a lot easier to figure out what best specifies and works and helps you for that goal, whatever that is. And, and speaking on that, I want to jump because you hit, you hit a, a good core with that. Um, we still do what will be considered corny things because they still work. So I had, <laughs> I had one of my artists go to the mall with a big white boom box and play her music while riding down escalators and walking around uh, to give people a teaser of the new project. And what ended up happening out of that scenario is that the uh, World Star Hip Hop representatives were there. And a week later, I was in World Star Hip Hop's offices negotiating deals for radio and video play. So, yep. you know, no idea is too corny or cheesy. You can definitely, if there's an audience there, if there's people there and your stuff is good, you know, her brand was on point. Every, like we planned it. It wasn't just going to mall with a boom box. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it was a guerrilla campaign. We planned it, but you can get tastemakers and influencers attracted by doing things like that. Right, and guerrilla campaigns are something I'm definitely going to go um, deeper into. PR, there's so many great PR type stunts that, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's endless. There's been so many um, of them that are well done, and I'll definitely start a series up for you guys because there's a lot of creativity creative ideas and ways to get attention that don't even come from the intensity of a marketing campaign, mm -hmm. but just really well-planned, uh, spontaneous moments that other people aren't expecting. But as Sir said, you have to already have your package correct because once you get that look and people see and figure out who is that person, they're going to wonder, I mean, they're going to look and say, if this, this person has more stuff that I love, okay, we need to get them on, but okay, they did something cool but they don't really have any good music or any right. kind of brand. They don't know what to do with you. So it was just another story. Attention to the next thing. Yeah, and the follow-up is very important. Like yes. I stayed in contact with these people, following up with these people, understand that marketing is a flow. It's an energy. It's people yes. feel like they're engulfed into a process and you take them on a journey. Mm. So you have to pick them up in one place and drop them somewhere else. That's like the general goal of your yes. campaign, right? Sure. To in immerse them into your world. So when you do that, you, you might have done what I did and picked them up, but what the hell is this world of yours that you've just immersed them in? Does it exist? And right. when they get there, is it a journey? Creating that is important. Right, exactly. So uh, really quickly getting to another question, Inspiring Videos wants to know how much does fashion and style have influence in becoming successful in the music industry? Depending on who you are as an artist, but I'll tell you right now that before they see you, they're gonna see your clothes. Um, Fashion and style is very important. You have artists such as Rihanna, who we mentioned on the last show, that's built her brand off the back of fashion. You have other artists that have a lack of fashion. Um, fashion and hip hop go together like yin and yang. Fashion, hip hop, art, dance, they all go together. So yep. if you are an artist and you're putting your image together, what you look like is critical and very important. Now, it doesn't have to be flashy. When, he, when we say fashion, it doesn't mean that you're spending the most amount of clothes. You don't have to be Versace, Versace, Versace. But what you do have to do is make sure that your brand matches the clothing that you're choosing. So if you are a flashy artist, then you need to wear flashy clothes. Yep. If you're not a flashy artist, then there's no need for you to you know, spend that money because it's not a part of your brand. You're going to spend your money somewhere else that's brand centric uh, to what you're trying to accomplish. Yep. Understand what your fans are going to look like and what they care about. Because there are some people 
even if your music is great, brands are kind of the packaging and people can love something that they hate if the packaging is right and they can hate something that they love if the packaging is wrong. Mm -hmm. And what you don't want to do is be an artist, let's say typically conscious artists, they don't want them to be flashy, right? right. And But if people see you walking around looking flashy, oftentimes they're going to be turned off by you. That type of person that loves conscious music, they're going to look at you as some kind of walking contradiction, et cetera, et cetera. You kind of understand what I'm saying, but don't contradict your brand unless your brand happens to be this contradiction that plays off of it. But that's like a whole another uh, wormhole and we're not <laughs> going into it. All right. So last question. And this one is from Ulia Cost or Yulia Cost. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but how do you as a manager okay. market a new artist? All right, so the first thing that we do uh, when I take an artist on is I want to completely understand who you are, what you represent, what you stand for, your message, all of that. So the first thing I do is I take the artist, we sit them down, I ask a series of questions, I, I identify questions that are very specific to try to have like this psychological moment with the artist to determine what they are. So if I was doing that with you, what I would be looking to do is determine what are the three words that sum you up, three words that you represent. Okay, once I determine what those three words are, I then from there I'm going to build everything around that. We want to know what your message is in reference to those three words. So your message could be, I want to be a pimp. I'm a pimp, everyone should be a pimp. That may be your message. Your message might be, everyone in this world should love each other and hold hands and, and, and whatever your message is. I want to understand what that is in relation to those three things. I also want to understand yep. how do you look and how do you look in relation to those three things. When we do our marketing campaigns, we're going to do marketing campaigns that are based off the foundation of those three things. When we record records, if the record doesn't fit in these three things, it's not going on the album. That's, the, that's how intense it is because if, if I want you to truly understand what we represent, then it has to be, the brand has to be fluid throughout. So that's the key thing. I know it's not probably what you were looking to hear, but that is exactly how we approached it. That's how I approached it at other uh, major companies prior to doing it on my own. And it's very effective at getting people to understand your message. If you think about it right now, Snoop Dogg doesn't have to release an album for you to rock with him. Snoop Dogg, you, yep. you know, I don't have to tell you guys what he represents. If I say Snoop Dogg, you're going to think of a couple things that he represents. And the things that he's done throughout his career, no matter whether they're music or not, all correlate with those things. You know he did the pimp thing. You know he did the weed thing. You know he's cool. No matter what, cool, pimp, weed. Like, those things are going to connect with Snoop Dogg. That's why he can do uh, America's uh, Girls Going Wild. Yep. And it actually fits. Yep. And you don't think, why is, oh my God, why is he doing that? Right? Whereas if, if Snoop, if, if Kanye West did it, you'd be like, oh my God, Kanye, he's tripping again. Yep. You know, that's yep. how you look at it. You know, so... Those three things are core values. Build your brand around those three things. Take the time to find out three words that describe you and your, and your music perfectly. Great, great, great question. And once again, this has been a great session with Sir Love, of course, me, Bram, and Sean. Uh -huh. We should call it, give it a name, or like love your brand, or brand <laughs> you love or something. But um, yeah, I appreciate you guys. Any last words for them? Uh, make sure you check out www.phasevi. Dot com. That's phase six. Look, uh, look me up on YouTube at uh, phase VI. Uh, it'll pop right up. Subscribe. Watch more stuff. I really focus on the back end, the, the business, the paperwork, um, strategies, and reference to how to put money in your pocket outside of the marketing. This man right here, obviously, as you guys know, focuses on marketing. So I think it's a beautiful pair. Definitely take the information that he is saying in reference to how to market yourself. Take the information that, that I'm saying on my site in reference to back end business strategies so that you can actually profit off of your marketing. Um, um, and make sure that you win. Last note, and I know I'm stretching it out, but the last note is one thing that I noticed is that artists spend so much time marketing, and marketing is something that you do when you spend money, and you spend time, you spend energy. Make sure you also have a plan for making that money back because this is a business, and you want to be successful, and no one's signing a business that doesn't make money. For sure. We definitely, uh, and we're going to get into some of that stuff that he touched, touched on as far as getting that money back, but then also mm -hmm. reminding you guys that you don't have to even spend money if you market right. Um, but that's another story, as always. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. There it is. You might need to share me on some of that. I need to know them free tactics. Oh, man. <laughs> All day.